Good morning. I welcome you as we gather virtually on this second Sunday of Christmas. And apologies for the last minute change, as was indicated in the email that went out to everyone this morning. I had a ambiguous result to a rapid test. I'm quite confident that I'm fine. I just have a very minor tickle in my throat. Tomorrow I will be going into Brigham and Women's for a PCR test, which will confirm I'm quite sure that I'm negative, but we felt that this would be safest for everyone, particularly with the very infectious Omicron variant. So let us draw near to God as we rejoice in the love that came to dwell among us, full of grace and truth. Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from Luke's Gospel. It continues to tell the story following our Savior's birth. We know that 40 days after Jesus was born, Mary and Joseph took him to the temple to dedicate him to the Lord. And while they were there, they had a grace-filled moment with a righteous and devout man by the name of Simeon. And when the time for them to be purified according to the law of Moses arrived, they brought the baby Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as is written in the law of the Lord. Every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of two turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he saw the Lord's Messiah. And he came to the temple in the spirit, and while the parents brought the child to Jesus to do for him according to the customs of the law, Simeon took the child in his arms and blessed God and said, God, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared for all the people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about the child. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed. And a sword will also pierce through your soul. So their thoughts and hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years having lived with her husband eight years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him and all the redemption of Israel. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts upon the sacred scripture be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and always our redeemer. Some of you might find this hard to believe, but as God is my witness, it actually happened. When I was in the fifth grade, I had a dream. In the dream, 
I noticed that some of my fellow students were carrying some books for a boy in our class. When I asked one of them why they were doing that, she pointed at his leg. It was then that I realized that he was having a hard time walking because his leg was in a cast. And wouldn't you know it, two months later, while that boy was tobogganing at the local golf course, he fell off the toboggan and broke his leg. I had a similar dream a couple years later. In this dream, I saw a stadium full of cheering people. On the field, there were two football teams. And then I saw the stadium clock with five seconds left in the game. One of the teams kicked a field goal to win the game. And the celebrating began. Now, I didn't follow football back then. So I really didn't think anything of it a couple of days later as I was walking through our living room and I saw a football game on the television. Only it wasn't an ordinary football game. It was the Super Bowl. And with five seconds left in the game, the Baltimore Colts kicked a field goal to defeat the Dallas Cowboys. Everything that I saw on that television screen is exactly what I saw in my dream. Over the years, I've had one other moment like that, a moment where I got a glimpse of the future. The future, of course, is something that we're all thinking about to some degree as we begin to make our way through another year. If you're like me, you're wondering what 2022 will be like. Will we finally be rid of this awful pandemic? Will the political turmoil in Washington get worse? Will we finally begin to make some progress when it comes to dealing with the problem of climate change? You may also be wondering what 2022 will be like for you. You may be wondering about the coming months when it comes to your job or someone in your family or your health. Of course, if you really want to know what 2022 is going to be like, all you have to do is look at those tabloids that you see in the checkout line at the supermarket. According to those tabloids, 2022 is going to be a very interesting year. For example, did you know that a large portion of Chicago is going to be destroyed in a deadly major fire? And that because of global warming, scientists in Siberia are going to unearth a previously unknown and a deadly virus that's going to sweep across the globe. Oh joy, just what we need. Not only that, but according to those tabloids, in 2022 we are going to receive a visit from some aliens who are hiding in a mysterious asteroid. The asteroid has baffled the scientists who have said they've never seen anything like it. This is a picture of the asteroid that has been given the name Umauamaua, which is Hawaiian for scout. Not only that, but when those aliens get here, they're going to abduct some of us and take us back to their planet for further study. Well, if you believe that, I've got some swamp land in Florida that I'd like to sell you. When it comes to predicting the future, we're really no different from the young woman who gave a framed picture of herself to her boyfriend as a Christmas gift. On the back of the picture, she wrote these words. My dearest Tommy, I love you with all of my heart. 
And I will never, ever stop loving you. I will love you for all of eternity. Hugs and kisses from your beloved Diane. P.S. If we should ever break up, I want this picture back. Put it all together. And it's really simple. No one can predict the future. I can't predict the future. You can't predict the future. Only God can predict the future. Just look at Simeon. Simeon actually got a glimpse of his future. But it only happened because God allowed him to see that glimpse of his future. God told Simeon that somewhere in his future, he was going to see the Messiah. Luke tells us in his gospel that it had been revealed to Simeon by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he saw the Lord's Messiah. That grace-filled moment came when Mary and Joseph brought the baby Jesus to the temple to dedicate him to the Lord. While they were there, Simeon took the baby Jesus in his arms. And you can almost imagine tears in his eyes as he said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all the people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people, Israel. Only God can predict the future. So in the coming year, will this awful pandemic come to an end? Only God knows. In the coming year, will the turmoil in Washington get worse? Only God knows. In the coming year, will we begin to make meaningful progress when it comes to dealing with the reality of climate change? Only God knows. When it comes to your future, only the God who created you and loves you and has redeemed you knows what's going to happen in the days and the weeks and the months to come. Only God knows the future, which is why as you stand here at the threshold of another year, the best thing you can do is be like Simeon. Luke tells us that Simeon was constantly in the temple praying and that he was a righteous and devout man. That's the key right there, righteous and devout. When you're righteous and devout, the future will always be better. It will always be better because when you're righteous and devout, you will live your life the way God wants you to live your life. And when you do that, the future will always be better. When you're righteous and devout, the future will also be better because you will know in your heart of hearts that no matter what happens in the coming days and weeks and months, our God is already there waiting for you. You will not be alone. The God who spoke to Simeon will be with you. The God who spoke to me in those dreams will be with you. The God who spoke to TJ in his dream will be with you. Some of you may remember TJ. TJ is Tom and Debbie Putney's oldest son. Debbie Putney was our Christian education director a number of years ago. They now live out in Colorado. When TJ was four years old, he had a dream about his great-great-grandmother who was 105. One morning at breakfast, TJ surprised his mother when he suddenly said, Mom, God told me in a dream last night 
the great, great Grammy is going to come and live with him now. Later that day, TJ's great, great grandmother, who was in good health, passed away unexpectedly. Good people, only God can predict the future. And when you are righteous and devout, you know that our wise and wonderful God is already waiting for you in all the days that he yet to be. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and most holy God, this is the day that you have made. And we have come to rejoice and be glad in it, as well as to rejoice and be glad in all the days that are yet to be. For we know that you are fashioning the future and that your love will eventually prevail over all that is not good, that is not right. And we know that in the birth of your only begotten Son, you are calling to us even now to allow us to be embraced by the blessings of his peace and his hope, his joy and his love. Holy One, help us to follow him, to be his disciples in a world that desperately needs to know that he is the way and the truth and the life, that he is the path that will lead to abundant life here on earth and everlasting life with you in heaven. Good and gracious God, we lift up all those who are struggling right now, especially those who are dealing with uh, this latest surge. We ask your healing upon them. We ask for your strength for their families and for all of us. And we pray with all of our hearts and all of our minds and all of our souls that this latest surge will be the beginning of the end of this pandemic. For we so long to be back to more of the way things used to be. We so long to gather here in your pews, in your house, in your sanctuary, where we may find the peace that passes all understanding and the love of each other that gives us strength for the journey. Amen. Good people, our service of worship has ended. Let us prepare to go forth wherever we may be to continue our service of love, knowing that our God goes before us. And may the blessing of God Almighty Creator Christ and Holy Spirit be upon you all. Amen.